Praise the Lord, everybody. It's definitely a blessing to uh, be able to join you all once again. It is Father's Day, and we want to uh, give a shout out to all the fathers. Uh, tell you all happy uh, Happy Father's Day. Uh, I know oftentimes you are overlooked, uh, unappreciated, undervalued, but I want to tell you all happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. Um, look, I, I believe this word is going to add value to your life. So if you know someone uh, who, whose head has been down this season of their lives, I want you all to invite them in. I believe God has a word uh, for you on today. So shout out to all my followers and people viewing on Facebook and on Instagram. God bless you all. Get ready to get started at 10 o'clock. Amen. I prepare the word of the Lord for you all this morning. cellular device. Amen. All right, all right. It's good to see y'all this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God for all our followers coming on in. Come on in. Amen. God's going to minister to somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, shout out to our fathers from all over the nation, all over the world. Uh, we appreciate you. Although I'm not a father, I want to give a shout out to my father, uh, Elder Ricky Taylor there um, in Ripley, Tennessee. By the way, Brownsville, thank you for being a good father uh, to me in my life. And uh, I guess my father here in Chattanooga, I got all kind of fathers, amen, here in the city. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we, we got to get this word out to the people of God. God has an encouraging word for your life. So. Uh, invite somebody in and tell them uh, that the arena praise is streaming live this morning. So let's go ahead and enter a word of prayer. Dear and Father God, we tell you, thank you, God, on today. God, we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for uh, your loving arms, Lord, that uh, surround us, Lord, for having your hand on us. God, despite the opposition, God, despite what we've been through, God, we give you glory this morning. God, we tell you, thank you, God, for the good, the bad, and the ugly. God, we just glorify you this morning. God, we take this time of intimacy, God, to commune with you, God, as we know, Lord, that you are able, God, to relate to us and in our areas of weaknesses and vulnerabilities and our iniquities. God, we just thank you, God, for being so faithful to us. So, so Lord, as we enter into this word on this Father's Day, God, somebody may be in the midst of trouble, somebody may have been disappointed, somebody's heart may have been broken, but God, we just bless you, God, for the word, Lord, that shall be released on today. So God, we pray, Lord, that you begin to open up our ears to hear your word, open up our eyes, God, to see in the spiritual realm, and God, open up our minds to comprehend what you're saying to us in this time, and we'll be so careful to give the praise, the glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you all so much for tuning in uh, once again. Uh, we're going to go to Psalm 3, the third Psalm. Amen. I believe God has a, a powerful word for you all on this morning. Psalm 3, uh, starting in verse number 1. Uh, the word of the Lord declares in Psalm 3, Lord, how they have increased who troubled me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I got to read that one more time for somebody whose head has been down. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. Uh, for the subject on this one, I want to talk about the subject, God, the lifter of my head. God, the lifter of my head. People, God, it's important that we understand this morning that we all endure circumstances uh, to cause our heads to hang down low. 
We are often disappointed. We are often tried. Uh, we often make plans that we anticipate that are going to work out and come to fruition. The reality is, is that sometimes our plans just don't work out. And as I was meditating on the word this morning, the Lord prompted in my spirit to encourage some people this morning to give you this encouraging word. That for some of us, we can testify this morning that there are some things that just didn't work out. So some things that you had planned, some things that you had mapped out, some things that you thought was going to happen and occur by this day, some things that you had planned didn't go as planned. That calls your head to hang down low. But I want to remind you to please remember that God is the lifter of your head. That, that yes, you, you can try to get somebody else to lift up your head. You can get somebody else to try to encourage you. But it's something different when it is God who can lift up your head. I can recall so vividly that there's a a video that is circulating the internet on social media. Uh, I believe it was a college basketball game, and I believe somebody missed a dunk, somebody missed a shot. And the team, the guy, the teammate, he, he began to put down his head. I wish I had the technology and video to show you. He put down his head. He was discouraged. He was disappointed. He was embarrassed about what had occurred on the court. But his teammate came over there and began, he began to reassure him, began to assist him. And he began, he did like this. His head was down, his teammate ran over, and he lifted up his head, indicating that everything was going to be all right. And I'm here today to encourage somebody that whatever transpired in your life, God is headed in your direction. He's headed into your vicinity. He's right there, and he is currently lifting up your head. As we began to look into the text, David, he is in the midst of trouble in Psalm 3. He said, Lord, how they have increased who troubled me, many those who rise up against me. And David, he felt, they began to tell him that there is no help in him with God. So David, he's in the midst of trouble. So in order to understand um, the, the, the really context of what's going on, we really have to be able to do our due diligence that what caused David to be in this trouble? What caused him to have his head hanging down low. In order to really understand the scripture, people of God, we have to be able to go back in 2 Samuel 15 chapter uh, where Absalom had stolen the hearts of, of everyone of Israel and he was going to kill and destroy everyone in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the place where David was, where he was anointed to be the king. And what you have to understand about David's situation and his predicament is that uh, Absalom's, his, his supporters grew powerful and they began to multiply, looking and seeming as if, if they would already automatically have the victory in their hands. Uh, news got back to David uh, that the whole country had gotten on Absalom's side. And we've, we've got, and they began to tell David, look, David, all right, uh, Absalom, they're coming. All right, they're coming for us, and we need to be able to run and escape from the hand of Absalom. So David and his entire household, they, they began escaping on foot. And the Bible tells us that David, he, after he heard this information, after he hears this bad news, this bad report, he, he ascends to the Mount of Olives, and he began weeping. He began weeping. He began crying because of Absalom. His army came to rush into Jerusalem to take over the territory. What you have to understand about David is that this discouraged David. Uh, this made his head hang down. Well, this caused David uh, to feel an emotional distraught. So David, he began to pen. He began to write. That the Lord, uh, how they increased the trouble around me. But they began to encourage him. So he says, but you, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. And I don't know why I came to encourage this morning, but, but whatever has caused your head to hang down low, God is the lifter of your head. Pastor Ricky, what does it mean to lift up? 
for in order for something to be lifted, it means it has to be exalted. It means to move or, or to bring something, here it is, up from the ground or other support to a higher position. And the truth of the matter is that whenever others experience opposition and face adversity, many people tend to keep their heads down. And what you have to understand about keeping your heads down is that whenever you decide to keep your head down, keeping your head down is a sign of defeat. Keeping your head down is a sign of discouragement. Keeping your heads down is a sign of encountering disappointment. But 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 what you have to understand, the people of God, is that that in the midst of what you're going through, God, He's getting ready to lift you up. He's getting ready to exalt you, meaning that you cannot longer stay in the same place, stay in the same disposition, stay in the same predicament that you have in, because God is lifting up your head. That that the reason why you have to endure that situation. Situation is so that God could promote and elevate you to become higher in him. So somebody need a word of confirmation, Pastor, why did I have to go through? And it's ultimately because God wants to elevate you to lift up your head. So as David is in trouble, he is uh, perplexed. Uh, but, but the Lord, he helps him in the midst of his trouble. Uh, what you have to understand is that the word of the Lord declares in Psalm 46 that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And sometimes, people, God, life will cause our heads to hang down low. Sometimes the death of a family member or a friend or someone whom you love will cause our heads to hang down low. Sometimes having a court case, knowing that you are guilty will cause our our heads to hang down low. Uh, sometimes, uh, whenever you have plans uh, uh, for college and, and in the realm of athletics uh, uh, concerning your destiny, sometimes they don't work out and it will cause your head to hang down low. I got some preachers and ministers who come back and watch this, uh, that you had plans for ministry, you had plans to do this, plans to do that, but it did not work out. But whatever has caused your head to hang down low, whether it's concerning your relationship, concerning your your marriage concerning the, your health in your body, please remember that God is our refuge and our strength, meaning that God serves up as our protection, that, that your head may be hung down low, but in the midst of your head being hung down low, God, he will cover you in the midst of it all. So I came to encourage somebody that God will give you the strength that you need. Why, Pastor? Because because according to Isaiah 41 and 10, the word of the Lord declares, fear not, I am with you. Somebody needs to shout right there and put it in the comment that God is with me. That's why you no longer have to fear and be discouraged because the Lord is with you every step of the way. He's holding your hand every step of the way. He said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you might as well hold your head up and stick your chest out in fear. Has no residence in my life because God is with me. And Isaiah began to corroborate in Isaiah 41 and 10. Be not dismayed. Preach, Pastor. I feel it this morning. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will prophetically. I will help you. I will sustain you. I will, here it is, uphold you with my righteous right hand. Pastor, what are you trying to tell us this morning? When he says, be not dismayed, it means that he was talking about be not dismayed. Heartened, that, that some of us can testify that what we went through that caused our head to hang down low, it got into our hearts. It, it made our hearts discouraged. It made us feel depressed, depleted, unappreciated. And, and when he says, be not dismayed, be not disheartened, watch this, by sudden or unexpected danger or trouble. And I got some people watching me this morning that you had some unexpected news to occur in your life that was it's caused immediate trouble, that caused your head to hang down immediately. You were not expecting it to happen. You were not expecting it to occur in your life. And he says, once again, be not 
not dismayed, be not disillusioned, or be not disappointed about what happened and cause your head to come down low because God, here it is, he will strengthen you and help you. Somebody needs to be strengthened and encouraged this morning that God is a present helper, that God will help you to get through whatever you're going through because God will sustain you. And the reality is, people, God, I don't know the bad news you receive. I don't know the unexpected news you receive that calls your head to hang down low. But please remember on this Father's Day message that God is the lifter of your head. Watch this. Nothing wrong with mama them coming by you to encourage you and tell your baby everything is going to be all right. Nothing wrong with your spouse. Nothing wrong with them encouraging you and tell your baby you're going to be all right. going to make you do this. But there's something different. The encouragement hits different when God himself steps down from heaven and he comes to see about you and he lifts up your head and he tells you that everything is going to be all right. And I come to prophesy to somebody on this morning that there's another level of strength, there's another level of power, there's another level of grace that's on your life because God is the lifter of your head. I need somebody to put in the comments this morning that God is the lifter of your head. Amen, amen, amen. There's, there's another level of power. There's, there's another level of grace when, when God upholds you and lifts up your head. Uh, the Bible tells us even in Psalm 24, people got, all right, that <laughs> he says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. Watch this. And the king of glory shall come in. I got a question I like to propose to you on this morning. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift you up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. And some of y'all, you need the glory of the Lord. You need the king of glory to come in and lift up your head. I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. I need somebody to put in the comment to say lift up your head. Lift up your head. All right, so here it is. Here's what I want to talk about this morning, people God. That God, I think y'all have the, the conclusion, that God is the lifter of our heads. Let me say it again because I want you to get this in your spirit. Watch this. God is the lifter of our heads. Now, after God lifts up your heads, fathers, and, and people going through a situation, after he lifts up our heads, you still must do your part, all right? Uh, well, Pastor, where are you going with this? I thought God was about. Now, don't get me wrong. See, see God, he's going to lift up your head. He's going to give you the word in the right season of your life, and he is going to lift up your head. But as after he lifts up your head, you must be able to do your part. Pastor, what are you talking about this morning? My announcement to everyone watching this video, watching this live, who will come back and watch this video, that, that, that my announcement to everyone who, whose head has been down, whose head has been low, to keep your head up. I know it's very simple. I know it's very plain. But in this season, I need you to keep your head up. Now, if your spirit has been low, if you have been disappointed, all right, today is Father's Day. Father's Day. If you feel that you've been overlooked, if you feel underappreciated, if you feel unworthy of what you are and who you are and what God has called and anointed you to do, I need you to keep your head up. I got some people on here. You made plans. You made provisions. Things did not work out the way that you anticipated to. But I heard the voice of the Lord. He says, keep your head up. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how painful it is. I don't care how embarrassing it is. I don't care what you've been feeling. I need you to keep your head up. Now, you may be asking the question, you may be inquiring this morning, why do I need to keep my head up? I, I, I need to be encouraged. I need to be uplifted. Why do I need to keep my head up? Point number one, you separate yourself when you keep your head up. Let me let me say it again. You you separate yourself 
when, when you keep your head up and, 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 and as David is going uh, through his situation, we also have to be able uh, to support what we're talking about uh, from the book of Judges, the seventh chapter. All right. The Bible uh, lets us know. All right, that that we have the Gideon and his army and and the troops. All right, and they were going to battle. They were trying to conquer the land of the Midianites. And, and the Lord began speaking to Gideon. He said that the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them there for you. There, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. And the number of those who lap putting their hands up to their mouths was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. So in order to understand the context of the scripture, all right, you first have to understand that they started off with 22,000 people and they began to trickle down to 10,000. So 12,000 people dropped out because of fear, all right? And now out of this 10,000, the 10,000 were tested and there were around 9,700 people who began to drink water like a dog, meaning that their heads were down. I'm going somewhere. And now people got only 300 all right, of the troops are left. So the people who were fearful, they had to go home. 12,000 people were fearful they had to go home. Now it went from 10,000 to 300, which means that 9,700 people kept their heads down. But there were only 300 people, here it is, who decided that despite the enemy, despite the battle, despite what we're experiencing, despite the challenges and opposition that we're in, I'm going to keep my head up. And because they made a cognitive decision to keep their heads up, they separated themselves from the rest. So, See, sometimes people, God, we shout and we can pout all day, but, but keeping your head down, once again, is a sign of defeat. Keeping your head down is a sign that you really don't want it. But when you decide to keep your head up, preach pastor, is an indication that I'm coming out with the victory. And I don't know who's been in a season of defeat that it won't happen for me. It won't work for me. But baby, I'll tell you, when you keep your head up, you are communicating to everybody connected to you that I am coming out with the victory. I am coming out on the winning side. No devil in hell can stop what God is getting ready to do in my life. So you separate yourself when you decide to keep your head up. And I need somebody to encourage their father. If you know some men who are some good fathers, and sometimes we don't give them the accolades and recognition that they really need. But fathers of Mr. Marlin, Coach D. Anthony Heyman, Coach Moon, all the men who are connected to me, all my fathers, men of God, keep your head up. Keep your head up. Everything is going to be all right. So you separate yourself when you decide to keep your head up. So if Gideon and the troops, watch this, if they would have kept their heads down, I'm talking about the 300, the ones who decided to keep their heads up in the midst of what they were going through. If Gideon and the troops would have kept their heads down, they would have lost sight of the vision. Now I'm getting ready to get a little personal now. <laughs> if they would have kept their heads down, they would have lost focus on the end goal. So the reason why you must be able to keep your head up this season of your life, here it is, is so that you don't miss what God is about to do in your life. And I've come to prophesy this morning to somebody that if you just decide to keep your head up, you're going to see everything that God has promised you. If you decide just to keep your head up and stay focused, the vision that you have, the dreams that you have, the plans that you have, God is going to start bringing clarity and revelation to everything that you've been envisioning. Gideon and his truth people, God, they put their hands up to their mouths and they stayed focused. They were not easily distracted about what was going on. They didn't care who left them. They didn't really care who was with them, but they decided in the midst of what I'm going through, I'm going to keep my head up. I'm going to drink from this water and stay focused on the enemy that's in front of me. And this is what they call tunnel vision. Somebody put in the comment tunnel vision. See, in this season, people, God, 
you got to have tunnel vision. And that, that when you look at the Gideonites, as they were kept, kept their heads up, as they were putting the water up to the mouth, they stayed focused. They were zoned in. Here it is. They were unbothered. They were not easily distracted. And they were different from the other troops who left because they were after something. And when it comes to reaching your destiny this season of your life, your destiny is contingent upon if you're going to keep your head up. So if you have plans and goals and dreams in order to reach them, you're going to have to keep your head up in order to reach your destiny. So the Gideonites, here it is, they ended up startling the Midianites and they began fighting each other and Gideon, he came out, they came out with the victory. So child of God, here I am this morning, I need you to keep your head up. Yes, I know the plans thought that you had were where you had this in mind. You thought this was gonna happen for your business, but it didn't work out. You thought it was gonna happen by the end. But I need you to keep your head up because God is getting ready to give you the victory. So people God need y'all hear me this morning that David he was in trouble. But God is the lifter of his head. I'm here today to encourage somebody to let you know that better days are coming. That everything is going to be all right for you and your life, for you and your family, you and your children, for you and your business, for whatever you've been working on. But God, whatever discouraged you that caused your head to hang down low, you have to be able to reiterate this all week long that God is the lifter of your head. And when God lifts up your head, you're going to have to make a decision to stay focused. Don't be dismayed. Don't be overwhelmed about things happening and occurring in your life that wasn't good for you. But you have to remember what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for our good to them who love God, to those who are called according to a purpose. You got to know that it's working together for your good. That whenever you're discouraged, whenever your head feels low, that this didn't work out, that God is the lifter of my head. There's nothing like when the hand of God lifts up your head. That when you're in the midst of trouble, when you're in the midst of going through God, he lifts up your head. So child of God, I need you to hold your head up and stick your chest out. That things are going to work together for your good. It won't always be like this. And the reason why you're going to keep your head up is because you're wired differently. That a lot of people, they left the calling, they aborted the, their assignment, they, they left the mission of what God had called them to do. And they never did see the vision come to fruition. They never stepped into the destiny because they decided to stay in that low place. But I believe that God has given us supernatural power. He's given us an anointing. He's given us the grace to maneuver through that valley that we're going to overcome our obstacles. We're going to come opposition. That it did not work out. But God is the lifter of our head. Child of God, I really need y'all to get this. That I had plans. We had plans for the arena praise to purchase a church. And uh, everything looked good. The pricing was right. They were very cooperative. They were happy that it would be us to acquire the property for our church building. And all of a sudden, a week or so ago, I received an email and uh, the seller, they began to ask for an additional hundred to 150,000 on the property. Now, we had set in mind a certain budget. Okay, we can afford this. We we're getting a great deal on it. It was gonna be discounted. But I told them, hey, this unfortunately, we cannot 
afford. We cannot, our budget doesn't exist for us to purchase it at this price. So that deal that was on the table, it fell through. All right, we had good plans, good intentions. This is the property for us, prayed and met with the owner. I mean, everything was like the perfect picture. But all of a sudden, it fell through. And it caused our heads to hang down low. But in the midst of what we were working on, planning on, this message was for me today, that God, in the midst of what we're going through, he will still be the lifter of our heads. So child of God, once again, if I may reiterate, as I was meditating on the word this morning, I, I began to hear God saying that many of you all have plans. You had dreams, you had stuff that you were working on that didn't go as planned. But you have to remember that God is the lifter of your head. That you may have lost a family member, a friend, your health may be declining, children, stuff, just everything's just messing up. But I need you to be encouraged this morning, child of God, that God is the lifter. That, that word in the, the, the Hebrew, it means to exalt. That you're not always going to be in this place. That he's going to exalt you up. He's going to lift you up out of this situation. And you're going to come out with your hands uplifted. You're going to come out with a praise on your mouth. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we tell you, thank you, God, on today. Lord, that you are the lifter of our heads. That whatever caused our heads to hang down low, whatever the disappointment was, whatever the setback was, God, we thank you, God, for being the lifter of our heads. So, God, continue, God, to strengthen our faith. Continue, God, to make ways. Continue, God, to provide. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. Because, God, if you call Sarah to have a baby at the age of 90, then, Lord, we understand that not, there's nothing too hard for you. God, we just bless your name, God, on this morning, God, for this word of encouragement to that person, God, who had plans and to close a house in a certain amount of time. It didn't work out. But, God, we thank the Lord that it's confirmation, Lord, that you have something better in store for us. God, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all, saints of God. Thank you all so much for tuning in. A relatively quick word. Amen. I got done in 25, 30 minutes this morning. Amen. Got back in late last night around 11 o'clock. But nonetheless, God is faithful. He's good. Uh, if you want to be saved on this morning, all right, the only thing you have to do is confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. Look, LP, we are getting ready to have our first annual meeting or right, get together on next Sunday, June 27th at 3 o'clock. All right, if y'all feel connected to join us, let me know. Uh, we're going to be meeting at one of our members' house. Amen. We're getting ready to eat some good food. Amen. Next Sunday at 3 o'clock on June 27th. We want y'all to come back and feel part of our ministry. Feel that you're a friend uh, to the ministry. Come on out and enjoy some free food, some good cooking. Amen. The saints of God, they're working on it. Amen. All right. Thank you, AOP. I love you. Happy Father's Day once again to all of our fathers. Hey, call all your fathers, all the men who you know, even if they're not your personal father. Call them. Let them know. Hey, hey, keep your head up. Keep your head up. Hey, you, you're doing a great job. You're doing a phenomenal job. Let's appreciate our fathers. Let's embrace them. All right, for their hard work, for their commitment, for being in our children's lives. Hey, Amen. I ain't a father yet, but I'm a father to a lot of basketball kids. Y'all know I'm around a lot of kids. Hey, Amen. So technically, I'm their father. Uh, I remember uh, my spiritual daughter, spiritual son, Rainy and Ryan, uh, last year, before the pandemic. Uh, Pastor, you know, you like our father to, to us. I'm like, oh, it made me feel so special. All right, so I'm going to call them, uh, let them know that I'm thinking about them. But once again, thank y'all, Mr. Marley. Happy Father's Day to you, man. God, I got something for you. I got to drop it off to you. I love y'all, praying for you. Y'all make sure you sow a seed into this offer, into our ministry. Uh, dollar sign Arena Praise. You can get online at arenapraise.com. Once again, thank y'all so much for your sacrifice and obeying the Lord with all that you have. I love y'all praying for you. Uh, I'll be going to hit and uh, uh, Mr. Cecil today. Amen. He's my <laughs> one of my fathers here. All right. Love y'all. God bless you. And I pray that in this season that you remember that God 
It's the lift of your head. God bless you.